What is prayer? Why is prayer so important? What is the purpose of prayer? We're going to find out all the answers to these questions on today's episode of Modification. My name is Sam Jams, and I'm still live here in the city of Port Harcourt. By the time we come back from this very short break, I'll introduce you to the beautiful people that I have here with me on the set today, and then we'll make an attempt to answer all of your questions. Don't go anywhere. You are welcome back to Weatherfication. And like I said, I'm not alone today. I've got beautiful, wow, you need to see their smiles and their beautiful faces. I've got Faith. Faith is a writer. You're welcome to Weatherfication. I've got PTK, Pastor Tokoni, and she's a pastor. Wow, a gorgeous one at that. And last but not least, I've got Pastor Smiling from ear to ear, Pastor Humble, who is an audio engineer. You're welcome to modification okay so like I said earlier what is prayer why is prayer important what is the purpose of prayer our dear man of God has taught us several times what prayer is and he has told us that prayer is a romance mm. with righteousness prayer is a fellowship like it brings you together it gives you a oneness with the father mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much um, if you, we have the book, How to Pray Effectively, and you want to know more about prayer, you just go get that book and it will, you'll be enlightened on how, what prayer is. And our man of God, through the years, has exponated on the term prayer. Prayer is, like she said, it's the true romance of righteousness. It's, um, it's the communion with the Godhead in Trinity. Because, you know, Pastor has told us over the years, People think that when they pray, um, they, they, they relate to the God as if they are begging God for something. You don't beg God for something. It's like, it's like you have a father and you want something from your father. Every single time you want something from your father, you beg your father for something. Then it's not. There's a, there's a question mark with that. There's a question mark with that relationship because there is no, it's not a fatherhood and a sonship relationship. And, but when we learn to pray effectively, for example, in the book, How to Pray Effectively, there are different kinds of prayer. Yeah. Um, the prayer of faith, the prayer of intercession, the prayer of thanksgiving. Now, this, when we understand these types of prayer yeah. and we pray accordingly, yeah. we get the desired result that is intended oh. when we pray. Amazing, amazing. And this has been really insightful. We're going to go into you know, this message. We'll watch this message from Pastor Chris. And he's, exp ex he's expanding on the subject of prayer. So, this is the time to grab your writing materials, your notepad, your phone, um, call all your family members, your loved ones. They need to learn about prayer right now. Let's go. On Prayer Part 2. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for God. Just that a lot of people don't know how to pray correctly. They pray the wrong prayer or they pray the wrong way. And then they say, oh God, why is it taking so long? I told you, I had to do a study because I was praying for people, interceding for people. And if you've been a pastor for many years, you get to know a whole lot of people, all right? And then I was saying, Lord, why? Why do some people have a problem for so long? And the Lord showed me in the scripture. Those who suffered for a very long time. And why? Why do some people have a, a problem for a long time? I discovered. Discovered. It's not God's will. It's not God's will. Hallelujah. 
If you felt trouble in your body, talk to it. You tell it to leave you. Somebody said, well, I told it many times to leave and, and it's been very stubborn. You're going to get stubborn against the devil, right? You can get stubborn yourself. You know, sometimes when you're there and you're crying in the night and there's no one who can hear it and only God can see the heart that's crying, that's in need. God can hear it. And then he wants someone to pray. The spirits that's ministering to his children, looking for someone to pray. Looking for someone to pray. Because you see, God is limited by our praying. Surprise? He wants to do more, but he needs us to pray. He needs us to give him the right to do what he would love to do for us. I'll show you a few scriptures in a second. Very important. See. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Let's take a look at it. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for who? Our saints. Praying for all saints. Making supplication for all saints. Praying for everyone. Somebody says saints are those that have gone to heaven. Mm -mm, it includes those on earth. You can't be praying for those that are in heaven. This one says to pray for them. So these are the saints on earth. Amen. Amen. All right. Romans chapter 8. Let's read from verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Next verse. And he, God, he that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And what follows this? Look at the next verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. See how he needs us? How he needs us to fulfill the Father's will? Matthew chapter 18. Go to verse 18. Watch something now. I said, God, a lot of times is limited by our brain. If we don't get to do something about it, nothing might be done. Look at it. 18, verse 18. Verily, Jesus is talking here. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. On earth. Heaven responds. Look at it. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 19. Watch this. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, on earth. There's got to be action on earth for heaven to respond. If you don't do anything, heaven cannot respond. Even though blind Bartimaeus was crying out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want? Then he said, I want to receive my sight. You have to be specific. Crying, help me, oh Lord, help me, oh Lord. That's not going to get the job done. You can cry a thousand years and there will be no response until you are specific about what you want and take it from him. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David, have mercy. Jesus stopped and he said, what do you want me to do? He could have continued, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. Oh, have mercy, help me, have mercy, help me. What do you want? 
He said, I want to receive my sight. Aha. Then the master said, receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. Don't just cry. Don't just cry. You know, there are people who, who take, they take comfort in their crying. They love it when they are able to cry. They cry and cry and cry and feel sorry for themselves and cry. And they hope that God is responding to their cries. No, no, no. Don't suffer for nothing. He doesn't respond to the tears. He responds to your faith. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible. No matter how you cry, you will not please him. You can cry and cry and say, Lord, see my situation. The thing is, he's seeing your situation. He wants to help you, but he can't. You say, why? Because this is man's world. There is a legality about this thing. He has no legal right to intervene until you ask him to in a specific way. Wow. wow. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> Pastor Humble. Yes. Pastor Humble. Wow. Did you hear what I just heard? Wow. wow. So now it's clear to us the reason why certain people will keep living in that pain. They'll keep living broke. Regardless of how much they think they are praying, what they really are doing is they're just begging and crying, Lord, have mercy. You know, God is wanting you to say and be specific, this is what I want, these are the changes that I want to see. And then you exercise your faith. 